Hi, I'm your host, Dee Dee Chang. Audio Builders TV presents Acoustics with Jay Fergoletto. This multi-part series is an overview of acoustic topics. For a more in-depth look, we highly recommend Jay Fergoletto's book and courses. Jay is an award-winning veteran mastering engineer who has owned high-end mastering studios in Los Angeles, Atlanta, and Boston. His clients have included Alice in Chains, Annie DeFranco, Oasis, India Ari, Black Eyed Peas, Blondie, In Excess, and many more. Albums that Jay has mastered have earned a Grammy Award, as well as gold and multi-platinum record awards. He is an accomplished pianist and multi-instrumentalist. Audio Builders TV is produced by the students of Concord Carlisle High School with help from Colonial Sound and CCTV. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and subscribe to our mailing list at audiobuildersworkshop.com. <laughs> Audio Builders. Audio Builders Workshop is a work group for the Boston chapter of the Audio Engineering Society. Let's talk about the difference between large room acoustics and small room acoustics. Uh, a lot of people will say, okay, a large room acoustics, I've got a really big recording studio. Does that mean my control room is a small room and my recording space is a large room? Well, acoustically speaking, um, probably not. The only recording studio spaces that really get to be large rooms and behave like large rooms uh, are going to be like scoring stages and things like that. So what's a large room? A concert hall, as we said, a scoring stage. Uh, a lot of uh, auditoriums where, uh, you know, maybe theaters happening, could be dramatic performance, could be music performance. Um, what are small rooms? They aren't necessarily these little tiny, like, bedroom-sized things. They're you know, good recording spaces and control rooms. They're small little nightclubs. Um, the nightclubs can sort of bridge that gap between small room acoustics and large room acoustics. Control rooms, edit suites, video edit suites, things like that definitely function as small rooms. Uh, movie theaters, that's a good one. There's some small little theaters which kind of could function as small room, but a lot of them are large, function as large rooms. So what's the difference? What's the behavior difference? Uh, of sound in those rooms. Well, one of the most important things when you're dealing with indoor acoustics is that you have boundaries, you have walls, you have ceilings, you have floors. You have things that uh, the sound wave is going to encounter, bounce off, come back in the room. Of course, the other thing that can happen when it hits that boundary wall is it could be absorbed or it could transmit right through. Um, so you've got 100% of your sound, a certain percentage of it is going to reflect a certain percentage of it will absorb, a certain percentage of it will pass right through. Um, each of those things have a Greek letter associated with it. Um, handy that they kind of agree with the words, uh, whereas the reflection coefficient is the Greek letter rho. The um, transmission, or how much is transmitted, of course, is tau, uh, and the absorption is alpha. So that's easy enough to remember. Um, so what happens when this sound actually bounces back, the stuff that's reflected? Um, well, standing waves is one of these things that happens where you have uh, a certain mathematical relationship of the length of that, that frequency of sound, that actual physical wavelength, uh, and the way that it interacts when you have walls that are that exact distance apart. Um, what happens is you've got something, a wave that starts bouncing back and forth, uh, and as it reflects back upon itself, um, the positive going parts and the negative going parts um, end up standing in, sp in space. So you've always got this spot where they're positive here, always where they're negative and matching here. If you've got, as they combine together, you've got a positive going one from one direction and a negative going one from the other direction, well, you're going to have what's called destructive interference. You're going to have um, a node there where all of a sudden that frequency disappears. The negative going energy is going to suck down that positive energy. Um, if you have a spot where you've got two positive going things, you're, you're going to have an anti-node. You're going to have it where it's constructive interference, where that bounced reflected wave mixing with the original direct wave is now going to make it too loud in that spot. Um, so what happens again with large and small rooms? Well, in a very large room, you've got lots of these bounces happening from all over the place. You've got this reverberant character. You've got 
all of these random, very complex interactions where all of these reflections are going to be fairly filled in, evenly spaced, pretty dense all over the place. Um, the idea being that if you've got a lot of these little variations packed in a spot, instead of being sort of flat and a big bump and then a flat and a big trough, you're going to have so many ups and downs packed together that they kind of more or less even each other out. And you'll have more or less a uniform or close to uniform uh, response. Now, in a large room, this statistical sound field happens down to very, very, very low frequencies. Your spaces, your spaces of walls are so far apart that uh, the wavelengths are going to get very, very long. The frequencies are going to get very, very low. Uh, a lot of these problems are going to be so low as to not matter anymore. If you've got a standing wave down at you know, 19 hertz, who cares? We can't hear that anyway. Uh, none of the instruments that you're going to be recording can reproduce that. However, as you're using a smaller and smaller and smaller room, um, where you change from what's called this statistical sound field to uh, modal behavior, room modes, meaning all of these different sound, uh, these standing waves that are happening, the room modes. Um, you start to get modal behavior, meaning you don't have that packed, dense things that sort of even each other out. You've got some that are just way too much. You've got other areas where you're losing everything in that particular frequency. Um, so most of the time in small rooms, you're talking 300 hertz and below, sometimes four or even 500 hertz and below where you've got that modal behavior, where the um, response is just not even at all. Can't trust it. Uh, whereas larger rooms, you might have that modal behavior doesn't happen until below 30 or you know, even lower. Uh, again, by that time, we don't care about it. So that's really the big difference between large room acoustics and small room acoustics. Uh, when you start talking about, hey, we need bass trapping, you've definitely heard that. We're going to do a whole talk on that. Uh, but you're talking about small rooms where you want to absorb those low frequency things that are happening, you know, three or four hundred hertz and below, so that they're not bouncing back and combining with the direct and causing those areas of constructive and destructive interference, those nodes and those anti-nodes. You want to knock out those inconsistencies. What do you do? You get absorption on one of these surfaces or both of them, knock out that reflection. It doesn't mix together with the direct sound. Now you've stopped these big variations uh, and you've evened out that response. Uh, the same kind of bass trapping isn't really necessary in the large rooms. It can be used in large rooms for other things like just excessive amounts of ringing and low frequency reverberation, but you don't need it to stop standing waves at 300 hertz in a concert hall. They just, the modes are so densely packed at that point, it just doesn't matter. Um, so that's the basics of large room versus small room acoustics. We're going to get a lot more in depth in the next one. Uh, we're going to talk about how to deal with large rooms, how to deal with small rooms, different things like that. Uh, again, Jay Frigoletto for Audio Builders Workshop. Check out this next one. Thanks.